Hello everyone, this is Hugo from Ichiban Painting and today I will be showing you how to paint these bad boys here, some to Taos Barracuda, more specifically this one. I think that the only thing I didn't cover in this tutorial is how to paint the lens, but basically it's a red lens, so if you don't know how to paint the lens, I think you have a little problem. Uh, it's not that hard um, at all, but basically we're going to be looking at this one. Uh, I know the video is a little bit long, but I tried to show you everything from making the custom holes for uh, the flyer stand because it doesn't come with the flyer stand as to how to make the base, how to paint the model, how to paint the base everything is included in this tutorial and one thing I want to apologize for is I noticed while I was doing the editing of the video that sometimes my hair is in the way um, it's due to the position of my camera and also because when I work some people work to a normal distance I like to, and I'm used to working pretty close from my model, I like to see really well from that. Maybe I should buy a magnifying glass, but that's my problem. But I like to work close from my model, so sometimes you're going to see a little bit of my hair and my face in the, the frame. It's due to a bad camera positioning, so I will try to uh, address this situation next time. But enough talking, let's get on to the action. So here we go. So now I'm using the Dremel, trying to drill a. Uh, I drill the pre hole, and then after that, with the Dremel, I'm trying to make it a little bit bigger. That way, I'll be able to insert the rod. The rod that I'm using is an uh, eight millimeter clear rod from Tamiya. Um, so that's what I'm f try fitting there. I drilled the hole to a little angle just to give a little bit more dynamic uh, flying stance to the model itself. Um, so when the hole was finished, what I did is I actually washed the model and now we're going to be moving on to the base um, while the model is actually drying. Uh, because I did this tutorial in order of how I painted it. So as you can see when I'm going to be moving on the base and things like that, it's because I'm, you know, I was doing that. So I glued the rod to the base itself and then I just applied some, uh, some green stuff. And then that way with the green stuff I'm able to have a you know stronger uh, you know like a stronger hold to that that rod there just to make sure that it's not gonna move and it's not gonna go anywhere and that everything is gonna be safe when you put your expensive toe barracuda which is 70 pounds. So now that the model is clean and sexy we're moving on into the pre-shading. So the model was primed with a Tamiya primer that you can see on the screen right now and I'm using a normal uh, black, uh, actually you can see also on the screen right now, uh, to do the pre-shading. So I'm using my Harder and Steamback Infinity with a 0.15 millimeter needle and nozzle set to do the pre-shading. One little thing is that when you're doing your pre-shading, try to be as precise as you can because if you go too wide on the lines or if you're not too precise when you're going to put your main color on it, it's going to it's going to show through. Um, if you're using, uh, like for example, a Vallejo color, then you can go back with the gray, for example, and redo the, the, the touch-ups where you make a mistake. But me, I'm working with Tamiya, so I don't have the same color, so I cannot really do that, so I need to be really careful. So, the pre-shading is finished, now it's time to apply our first base color. So I'm using a Vallejo model color, Plague Brown, as you can see on the screen. And I'm applying a light coat and I'm going really lightly and I'm going to build up my color to a point where I'm happy with the pre-shading how it shows through the, the main color. Here you're gonna see me applying ty uh, Tamiya Diorama Effect Texture Paint and this one is to uh, sand. So basically I'm applying there everywhere on the base where I want it to be sand because obviously the towel that I'm painting right now are desert skin. Okay so um, <clears throat> now the base coat is all done okay. One thing that's really important once you finish the base coat is to clear uh, coat the model with flat varnish okay you don't want to put gloss varnish there because if you if you gloss him 
then you're gonna have to that do the camouflage and then when you're gonna apply the paint to the camouflage it's not gonna stick well okay this is one thing that should always be remembered is that if you gloss varnish a model you don't paint over gloss varnish uh, if you apply some some uh, wash on top of it it's all right but you don't apply paint because paint doesn't have teats to grab in okay so this step here needs to be flat so if you do want to gloss varnish your model right now, I will do it later, but if you do want to gloss varnish your model for extra protection, you could do it, but you will have to do another uh, coat of flat clear on top of it just to make it sticky, okay? For the camouflage, what I use for camouflage is I take my masking tape, I lay down a strip here. Uh, the masking tape I use for the other, because uh, this is the second uh, Barracuda that I've made, was 18 millimeter, uh, millimeter strip. But actually, I ran out of it, and I thought I had a, a spare one, but actually it's 10 millimeters. So basically what I did, I put two strips together. But you could use any kind of, of you know, like, whiteness. It's just going to change the, the size of the pattern you can do. So what I do to do the, 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 the design that you saw probably on the other model that I already finished, or if you didn't see it, you're gonna see at the end. But the, the way I designed this camouflage is I'll cut the ends off because the ends have the little thingy. And then basically what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and, and start uh, cutting some triangular kind of patterns or... And you see now my exacto blade is a little bit broken so it doesn't pull off nicely from the thing so I know it's not super nicely video type but let me change that quick and then we're gonna move back to fast forward but I just wanted to show you real time come on just wanted to show you real time what it looks like and then after that you know we can fast forward so basically you see having a brand new blade will help with that and especially a pointy blade Okay, so that way I can go in and, and under and lift it up without you know, bending corners. And basically, you know, I just take my uh, my thing and I apply it to the model. Um, one thing that is kind of important when you're applying uh, camouflage like this is that the base coat that you see here will actually uh, be the one that will pop off under those patches so you have to bear in mind when you're applying the stickers or the masking tape how much do you want this color to show through I started with my uh, my lightest color and my other color on top is gonna be my darkest because I want to always have my lighter color here because of the bait that the you know the pre-shading and everything so it pops out compared to when I apply my darkest color the pre-shading is not gonna pop out too much but at the same time it's pre-shaded so it's a darker color that's why I went in this order but you can do it at, at the order that you want but you still need to remember that when you're applying the, the, the sticker this is gonna be your, your color that show through so you want to apply it to a certain areas until you're satisfied with these areas are gonna be covered in this color and all the remaining areas where the stickers are not it's gonna be your other color okay so basically that's it I'm just gonna do a couple of more just so you can see it but you know nothing really complicated and then after that we're gonna move into fast forward and you're gonna be able to see it in fast forward um, when you are in an area like this here where there's a curve I like to use simply uh, Q-tip or hair cleaning bud just to make sure and I like to rub that's that's an important thing you rub it but at the same time you don't have to worry too much if these are not stick you know you can you stick it of course you, you want to make sure they stick well but you don't have to be you know extra careful to make sure that they stick really well because when you're gonna do your color on top of it you're gonna spray it lightly over it so it's not a biggie okay so let's move on into the fast forward Thank you. 
Now we are applying the second color of the camouflage, which is a mix of plague brown, beastie brown, uh, to a one-to-one. -one. If I'm not mistaken, I think that's the only colors that are in this mix, and uh, with uh, some thinner mix down. Okay, this is the moment of truth. Again, you need to have a sharp exacto blade, okay? And what you want to do is you want to be going gently under the plastic without scratching the main color of the thing. And you want to go peel out all the masking tape that you put out on the model. So this is extremely time consuming, as much if not more than actually putting the the masking tape itself because you need to be so careful when you pull it out because if you if you dig too deep with your your exacto knife you're gonna actually uh, scratch the main color of the paint and after the camel like that you cannot really go back and do touch up or redo the paint because you would have to send the whole model down because you have two layers of paint you have your whole first main color then after that you have a layer on top which will create a small uh, demarcation <clears throat> on the paint when you gloss varnish the model and everything, you won't see it because it's two different paints, so it won't catch your eye. But if you repaint on top of it, then you're gonna definitely see it, which is gonna you know, destroy the job that you did. So you need to be extremely careful. So that's why uh, a little bit earlier during the tutorial, I said it's really important to uh, clear coat your model before doing the first, uh, after you've done the first color, because it's gonna give a little extra protection if you were to scratch it with your blade and also uh, with your fingernails and at the same time you never know maybe the, the masking tape you're using might have a chance of pulling uh, your paint out with it so by clear co coating everything it's gonna prevent that from happening but basically that's pretty much it so let's move on to fast forward and we're gonna see what it looks like Here I'm out outlining the exhaust and I'm going to tell you, explain to you exactly why I do that in the next segment. Okay, so now we're going to move up to do the black detailing. And as you saw me in the previous segment, you saw me doing the edge here. And the reason why I did it with my brush and I didn't do it all is because I want a crisp edge here. And I want here the edge on the, the side of the reactor or whatever you want to call it, the turbine. I want it to have some effect of soot, which will be done with the airbrush. So here I don't mind having not a clean edge because the airbrush is actually going to go over it. But here, if we go into the logic of how an engine works, in this area here there would not be soot because the, the vehicle is moving like that. So technically the soot would not accumulate here, but it would actually go on top of the engine. So that's why I did the... Um, the whole thing here now to be able to do it but without because sometimes with the airbrush if I would start spraying here it would go further than where I want it to go well I'll use is I'll use some blue tack okay my mind is white but it's the same thing and I'll put it around where I don't where I want it to stop um, basically where I don't want to have some uh, I'll mask where I want the, 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 the soot effect stop okay and why am I using blue tack because blue tack as you can see here doesn't cover the whole thing okay so if I would put some masking tape here it, I would actually have some hard edge uh, it would stop on a line with that with the blue tack with it being not flush and a, a straight edge on top of the thing here it would actually create that soft edge uh, transition it would not look like I masked it off uh, previous to do it so I'll, I'll do this real time here and then after that we're gonna move on to the rest of the black detailing with the airbrush and fast forward okay so 
put my respirator on, very essential. It's gonna be a little bit noisy, but open my uh, spray booth. Chain, I changed my needle, okay? And the needle that I'm using right now is 1.5 millimeter, uh, 0.15 milli millimeter, uh, just because I want it to be precise. And what I'll do is I'll go finish the engine off. Oh. And you see now there was a mistake. Uh, the paint was not totally dry and there was an excess paint and it actually spider up and I didn't even shoot paint yet. But so I'll just use air right now to shoot in those vents. Just to make sure that this, that does not happen again. And I'll show you, there's some places that you make mistakes, it's totally normal or there's gonna be some fuck up happening. I'll show you later how you can camouflage them. Okay, so let's... Okay, so now it's time to make it, now finish the engine, so it's time to make it look like there's some soot, so you want to go on the edge. You want to be at the fair distance, so that creates that sprinkle effect. If you're too close, you're just going to pull a straight line, it's not going to look nice. That's it, so this engine is done. Let's move on to the next uh, detailing. Show it to you here closer, and you cannot really see it, but you're gonna see everything at the end. So let's move in fast forward and So off camera, what I did uh, for this part is that I painted the the, um, the base with the my um, my darkest color from my uh, camouflage, which is the mix of beastie brown and plague brown, uh, one to one mix. I painted the whole base with that, and then now what I'm doing is I'm applying on the rocks uh, burnt umber from Vallejo Model Air that you can also see on the screen. Uh, then right now I'm moving on into using uh, my main color that you can see me mixing right now which is my plague brown and I'm applying it only on the most uh, top area so basically I'm doing zenital spraying kind of but I'm, I'm highlighting it manually on the areas where I want to create that shadow pattern uh, with the base itself
That little base is a dirty girl, so it's time to wash her. So I'm using Citadel Griffon uh, Brown, I think. I'm not really sure. You can see it on the screen. Uh, it's a brown sepia kind of, uh, of sh uh, shade, or they call it shade now, which is uh, wash. And I'm using um, Devlin Mud on the rocks itself. After my super wash was dried, it's time to do some dry brush and I'm using the same color and I will be moving all the way up to a, a bleach bone to do the last highlight but I'm really uh, selective on how I do my dry brush with the color I'm using just to keep on the nice layering that I did with the airbrush previously. Okay, this section is pretty important now. The, uh, the base is all finished. Now, I clear them all with a gloss varnish, okay? And what I'm doing is that, and I did a couple of layers just to make sure that my gloss varnish is really, really smooth. And what I'm doing basically is I'm applying wash to go in the cracks. And as soon as the wash hit goes in the cracks, I want to take off and whip off with my Q-tip that you can see me. I want to whip off all the excess that are not in the cracks. So that way it's going to create that ni nice paneling that you can already see that's coming to pop up to create that, that pop effect, not just a one, you know, one tone camouflage that you cannot see the paneling and everything. Although that if you look at it closer, you're going to see the pre-shading, but this helps pop the whole model up. Now it's the power weapon, or I forgot, it's the iron cannon or something. So I talked to my client and he said he wanted it with OSL. So basically now I'm starting with white uh, from Vol uh, Valeo Model Air, sorry. Uh, but uh, I kind of messed up on, on that when I was doing it and I actually had to retouch it. So I'm not going to really talk about the steps on how I did it in the colors uh, since I, you know, I, I messed up. but. You can see the results at the end. I think I, I recovered my mistake pretty well. Okay, guys, I had to ask my wife to come in and show us because the OSL here, the way I'm doing it is not conventional. I actually set the model on me. And as you can see here, it's just a question of the angle that I am right now that if I would be working on the desk I couldn't be actually I wouldn't be really comfortable in doing this because it's actually really really precise work because you don't want it to overflow and go on on the model in areas where you actually basically don't want OSL so you do really need to be careful that's why I'm actually uh, doing it like this so as you can see here I'm slowly building up and I'm using my thumb to protect areas where I know the flow of the spray would go so I'm just being careful and trying to work precisely with my airbrush so the more profi proficient that you become with your airbrush then you're gonna be able to take on uh, things like that but if you don't want to risk it if you don't want to risk it then you can just use masking tape and there's going to be no problem with that it's just because i'm lazy i guess time to finish up this little baby so i took some red did a osl on a couple of targeting lights there's uh, two on each side two on each gun and one at the nose so um, did some uh, some osl there nothing too fancy nothing too uh, hardcore so basically that's pretty much it uh, for this model um you know I did at the end, you're gonna see the last segment is just the exhaust fans that are near the missile pod that, uh, that is under that I did some smoke effect around it because I put them at the end of the paint job that's pretty much it you can see the pictures at the end of the video tell me what you think if you didn't watch the video showcase that was previously uploaded on YouTube this was Hugo from Each Bomb Painting and I'll see you on the next video cheers for watching